Imagine this, you're trying to understand a function and as you're reading through the code, you're noticing multiple levels of indirection, which in turn is causing you to need to jump deeper into a tree of files and functions, ultimately putting you at some place different entirely. This is a terrible code reading experience, right? By the time you reset back to the original function that you were trying to understand, maybe you've lost track of what you were trying to understand in the first place. But what's the alternative? Well, it's to inline everything. This inlining should give the reader a more linear code reading experience, which should make it easier for people to read through and understand this code, right? Well, not really. You see, although we do have a more linear viewing experience, we now have to understand the guts of an entire chain of what were originally function calls every time we look at this function. That's right, you have to understand every detail every time you look at it. When in reality, you actually don't need to know about most of the implementation details to understand the original function. But how is that possible, you ask? Well, it's possible if the original author followed two rules when writing the code. Starting with the first rule, let's have a look at the details that we've just inlined. Now, don't worry, you don't need to understand these implementation details to get through this video. I'll just tell you what each segment of code is doing in plain English, and you can just ignore the details. So starting here, we simply declare the variable for the return value of the function. Then we're looking up a named environment variable to see if it's defined in our OS environment. And if it is, we're assigning the value to the variable environment var and setting OK to true. The variable OK is then used to determine if we'll execute this logic, which simply converts the string value of environment var taken from the OS environment to a bool. And then that bool will be assigned to the return value that we declared at the beginning of the function. Otherwise, if the named environment variable was not found in the OS environment, we execute the logic in the else here, which simply sets the return value to the passed in experimental flag parameter. Now you'll notice that you now have a general understanding of what all of this complex logic is doing just based on the simple summaries I provided for each segment. These so-called segments are the key to understanding the first law. You see, each segment can be seen as a single responsibility. So the first law of well-organized code is to group segments of code based on individual responsibilities. So instead of inlining all of this stuff into an unreadable blob of complex logic, extract individual responsibilities into their own segments. Now moving on to the next law, remember how you were able to understand what all of the complex logic was doing just by listening to my summary of each segment? Well, you can actually give that same type of summarization or understanding to the reader of your code through the way that you name your segments. So the second law of well-organized code is simply that segment names should summarize the segment's responsibility. Now the final result is a function written in such a way that you no longer need me to explain each inline segment of code to you. The function is self-explanatory in that very same way. And yes, this does result in some levels of indirection. But it should be clear now why that's better than the alternative. 